Great to be here at PDF. Uh, but last time I was here, as you know, I launched the IT dashboard. And it's people like you in the room who are transformational in making sure that you're holding government accountable and actually participated in giving the federal government feedback as far as what we needed to do to make sure that we're cracking down on wasteful spending across the federal government. What I'd like to do today is share with you five insights into how every country, state, county, city, across the public sector can save money and innovate. The first big insight for us was that the sheer act of shining a bright light on the operations of government fundamentally changed the relationship between the American people and the public sector that's supposed to serve them. No longer could people hide behind their desks in public offices but they were actually being held accountable because people like yourself were going online asking the tough questions. And we were able to take on the entrenched interest in Washington from mega contractors that were putting in place armies of consultants with nothing to show for it to government officials that were so vested in making sure that they continue the project that they started despite throwing good money after bad money. The act of putting all this information out there in the public space allowed us to make fundamental changes in how we're managing IT projects. The Obama administration has been the most transparent when it comes to IT around what we're doing with billions of dollars in taxpayer money. Second big insight for us is the fact that we were able to adopt consumer technologies. And what's really important for us is to make sure, if I can go to the next slide, uh, that from a consumer technology perspective, that we're no longer actually tied to the model of saying that the government is so special that it has to go out there and invent its own set of specialized IT projects. So what we were able to do is ask a very simple question, which is that if a startup company can go online, and if a startup company literally can provision a financial system by literally firing up QuickBooks, if they can provision an email system by literally getting online and signing up, why must the public sector go out there and actually build its own custom multi-million, multi-billion dollar IT systems? That is why we focus heavily on making sure that we're shifting as much of the government operations as possible to leverage consumer platforms. Why is it that we need to manage multi-million dollar contracts to create special enterprise solutions for the government. If you looked at what was going on in the 1960s, the greatest technology was actually in the federal government. If you move to 1980 to 2005, the greatest innovation was actually happening in the Fortune 500 space, where companies were innovating in the supply chain, they were innovating in what was going on as far as uh, fundamentally rethinking the deployment IT assets to serve their customers better. But something happened in 2005, which was a fundamental shift in power, where it moved to the consumer space. The greatest set of innovations right now are actually happening in the consumer space, and not in the government, and not in the enterprise space. Consumer technology is far superior to any enterprise technology that's out there. I would challenge you on simple things, like making a reservation uh, for a flight as you travel. Compare your experience in the enterprise space to the consumer space, and you'll find out very, very quickly that your experience is much, much better in the consumer space. Third big area that we focused on is actually to get rid of our addiction to what I'm calling digital oil. And what I mean by digital oil is that the current paradigm of information technology is very much focused on deploying infrastructure after infrastructure. If you look at the federal government, for example, we have spent about $26 billion every year on IT infrastructure. From 1998 to today, we've gone from 432 data centers 
to over 2,000 data centers. And to make matters worse is that average utilization on those data centers when it comes to those servers is under 26%. Average utilization for storage is under 40%. And there's a huge trend, which is that in the next five years, as a society and as a government, we're going to create more content that's born digital than since the beginning of civilization. So you can see this trend that's totally unsustainable. So it makes absolutely no sense to continue to throw good money after bad money when it comes to infrastructure too. That is why we've committed to shutting down 800 data centers across the board. We've committed to move $20 billion to the cloud. And the reason we've done that is because we believe that we can aggregate the government's purchasing power, not just at the federal level, but also at the state and local level. And we've put in place a number of procurements that actually move us forward on something as simple as email. What we were able to do is actually cut the cost for two agencies by $40 million by moving to the cloud. Why should we continue to deal with the old model, the digital oil that powers a big part of our economy and especially the public sector? The other area that I want to focus on is, in my view, probably the most important thing any public sector organization can do, which is to create the digital public square. If you think about how the public sector works today, it's essentially a one-way relationship where, frankly, the government just puts out information online uh, and uh, literally has services that are delivered in a very old model fashion of literally saying that we have a monopoly on the best ideas, or the public sector has a monopoly on all these services, and that, frankly, in a lot of places, there's still this prevailing view that uh, citizens are being treated more like subjects that need to be governed rather than co-creators that can help fundamentally reshape our democracy. That is why what we did in the beginning is we launched the data.gov platform to democratize data, but it wasn't just about data. It was actually about making sure that the government was being held accountable. And it was also about recognizing that the ingenuity of the American people is far greater than any public official, anybody in Washington who's trying to go out there and create the next generation services. That is why we work with Congress, and I see Congressman Chavez here, to focus and advance the America Competes Act, which literally changed the law that now allows every agency in the federal government up to $50 million in prizes and challenges. The old model was that the only way you could procure technology was through contracts or through grants. Now what we've recognized is there's, this, there, there's a fundamental shift in terms of what's happening in society. You could go back to the Agora, where people used to come to a physical public square to petition their government, to conduct commerce, to socialize. Today, with access to technology, as I look around the room, everybody's got practically a laptop and their iPad, and they've got their mobile devices. You can have a front row seat and get off of that seat and actually be active in moving us away from e-government to we-government, as Andrew says, and literally roll up your sleeves to create a more perfect union. I want to thank you for your continued support in uh, holding your government accountable and, frankly, for being some of the most innovative people in raising the bar. And as the president has said, it is vital to make sure that we're an open and transparent government so we can restore the trust between the government and its people. Without that transparency, without that focus, we'll never be able to restore that trust and we'll never be able to innovate out of some of the toughest economic problems we face as a nation. Thank you very much.